first thing first, thanks to pilot quarters. More on that later. Shin museums are awesome, and here in Tucson, Arizona, there's a really cool one. Join me for my first ever museum tour video as we check out the Pima Air and Space Museum. Enjoy the video. Hey, I'm Caleb from Caleb's Aviation. Welcome to the Pima Air and Space Museum. Let's check it out. Once inside the museum, you're met with a really cool Lego model of this Convair B36. There are also various engines, propellers, and all sorts of things on display in the main entrance area. Over here are some of the most common radial propeller engines ever built. Like this Junior Wasp engine, which powers one of my favorite planes ever built, the de Havilland Beaver. There's also a large wall with numerous patches worn by military aviators and a plaque displaying what they mean. I'll leave this in full in case you'd like to read it. There was also this cutout section where you could look inside the B-52. There were many aircraft on display just in this small section when you went into the museum. Leave it to say I was very impressed. I found this Augusta Westland helicopter particularly interesting as well. Keep an eye out for a future helicopter video. this part of the exhibit and to see the variety and the differences of all the aircraft from around the world. This really shows how many There are far too many aircraft here for me to go through all of them, but it's definitely worth a visit someday if you ever can. Blue Angels jet. Specifically, a Grumman Tiger. Wow, they don't even fly the Tigers anymore. And over here we have an F 16. Twenty simulator, a Boeing 720, a variant of the 707. Really cool. Wow. That is pretty cool. I really did enjoy. I really enjoyed seeing this 707 cockpit. And this one was particularly special for a reason you're about to find out.
This cockpit was used for the filming of the movie Airplane, a very special plane to see. An F Phantom 1 with the folding wings. That's really cool. The mechanisms have folding abilities to fit on carriers tighter. These were used in the US Navy. This is from Top Gun, the original, the F-14s. And the missiles, oh yeah. This was the Lear 23. I was so excited because this was the very first Learjet ever built by the company. Learjet, in my opinion, started making private jets the best in the world. And to see the very first Lear 23 was something I never thought I'd see in my lifetime. It has so many cool features like these wake vortex generators with lower stall speeds. It has tip tanks, lights on the front of the tip tanks, it's recognizably a Lear 23 by the tip tanks and the tail. Just so you know if you're ever trying to figure out what a Learjet is, those are easy features to distinguish them. And yeah, the Lear 23 only has two windows, one of which is an opening door. And I was so excited to see this plane. Next to one of my favorite jets ever built, the Learjet, this one being the Lear 23. Hey Reese, thinking of you. <laughs> This one's really an old one. You could tell the Bonanzas that were built before 1965 because they have the rounded windows. Newer Bonanzas have a rectangular window at the back. And if they're built after 1988, they don't have the detail. This museum was so cool. There was even a replica of the inside of an air traffic control tower. And it was surprisingly accurate and similar to the tower at Jackson. Oh wow, we've got a whole area of special liveries and old 737s and things. Oh, the Arizona 1737. I saw the Colorado 1737 the other day, but not this one. You know I really like special liveries. Ah, uh, this is really cool. Stewart in Australia has done a number of videos going around airplanes here, especially this one, the Blackbird at the Air and Space Museum. And this is kind of my first video going around the museum, so I hope you like it. And Paul, if you're watching, this video is dedicated to you. <laughs> The truly unique feature of the Blackbird are those engines, particularly the cones on the front, which adjust to let air go straight into the afterburner around the engine. Seeing the Blackbird was truly amazing to see how big it was in person. There were also some plaques with information and historical photos over here as well. 
It was really cool to see. So much fun over the past few days exploring Arizona, seeing all the mountains and the canyons and all that, and it's just been really, really fun, and I only wish I had an aviation-themed shirt to kind of go along with, like, the mountains in the desert. Oh, wait, I do! Thanks to PilotQuarters.com, I'm able to have a shirt for almost any need or occasion. This shirt I'm wearing specifically is called Reno and High Desert Shirt, but they make lots of other shirts for any occasion or need. If you go to pilotquarters.com and use discount code CALEB15, all one word, C is in CALEB15, you're able to get 15% off this already great deal. Once I headed outside, I also saw the VC-137 that was Air Force One. I just love seeing the tri-jets. I've never seen one in person. Oh, I think this one's actually a DC-10, not an MD-11. Even older. The DC-10s were built in the 870s for American Airlines. There were so many aircraft here, it was absolutely impossible to see all of them. It was still a really fun day though, even though I didn't get to see everything the museum had to offer. But then I rounded the corner of the museum outside and found something incredible. First was a Cathay Pacific 777-200 sent here by the airline to be on museum display permanently. Cathay Pacific 777 I cannot wait to fly on Cathay someday. I don't think there's anything in the world I'd rather do. I also saw a China Southern 737-300 Classic. But the absolute highlight had to be this General Electric 747-100 used as a flying test bed until it was phased out by GE and sent to the museum. This was so cool to see. And this plane has such a cool history. It's amazing. Definitely worth a visit. I am just loving this view of the 747. My favorite airplane by far. Keep an eye out soon. I'll be flying on this thing this time next year. This particular 747 was built for Pan American World Airway. It was designated as Clipper Ocean Spray. She was the 25th 747 ever built by the production line, even older than the 747 in the previous Inside Airports video at the Boneyard. She received multiple paint upgrades, going from an old livery to a new. General Electric acquired the plane in 1992, when she was about 23 years old, to test the General Electric GE90 engine for the Boeing 777 program. She also tested the Passport engine, which was made for Gulfstream private jets. She also tested the General Electric GEMX, being developed for the Boeing 787 Dreamliner program, the Engine Alliance GP7200 being developed for the Airbus A380, and the Leap 1B engine being developed for the Boeing 737 MAX. 
Her livery was then updated, and on January 25, 2017, she flew her final ever flight to the Pima Air and Space Museum. After racking up an astonishing 19,250 flight cycles, or about 90,000 hours in the air, GE then acquired a 747-400 to be their new test bed to test the General Electric GE9X for the upcoming Boeing 777X program. I'm standing next to two of my favorite airplanes ever built, the 777 and the 747. This is definitely worth visiting the museum. I hope you liked the video. It was really fun to make and I much enjoyed it. As always, wishing the blue skies and tailwinds.